just so, I don't know, I could get like, oh gosh, I could get emotional. I used to be a person who was late to everything, frazzled. If you feel like you haven't grown at all, that's a lie. I rebuke that. <laughs> the way that I'm going to step into it is with my new word of the year. So if you stay to the end of this video, then you know my word of the year is. And it's going to be, drum roll please. Cheers, everybody. We made it to the end of 2023. What a year it was. I'm not into 2024 yet. I'm trying to ease my way into it. And so I want to take you guys through the process of how I reflect and take all the lessons and practice gratitude for the year that we're in before I step into the next year. So if you are wanting to follow that same process because you want to feel grounded and have clarity about the next year, then this video is for you because I'm gonna be breaking it all down. This is interactive. Grab your drink, grab a snack, grab your notebook, grab your iPad, grab your pen, and let's break down 2023. Oh my gosh. That morning meditation from First Watch. So before we jump into the reflections and the lessons and the journal prompts, I want to introduce myself to you. Hey, I'm Rashonda. I'm a licensed therapist and I make content all about healing, growth, self-development so that you can step into your most authentic self and live a life that you love. So if that's the type of content that you like, then definitely make sure that you subscribe to this channel so that you never miss another video. Now let's dive into these monthly reflections because I'm pretty excited. I want to tell you a little bit about the process. I took time first to look at the year month by month. So in the first half of the year, January through June, I did document on here my monthly resets. I did them in Notion and I really found that helpful. Just that digital copy. I was going through the different categories. I was looking at my wins, the goals that I accomplished. What was I constantly passing over to the next month for me to achieve? I also used to do reflection questions at the end. So I thought that that was really cool. What did I like for that month? What was I most grateful for? What did I want to take into the next month? And I really got a good snapshot of who I was, where my mindset was, and how I was actually able to accomplish what I wanted to accomplish for those first six months. Now, the second six months was a little bit of a different story. I was still living life, but I actually didn't do a good job of documenting it, <laughs> which I'll talk a little bit about that later. But the way for me to actually reflect on this is I went to my photos on my phone. So I took some time just to go through my phone, scrolling, highlighting, harding, and making an album of just 2023 so that I could pull that information and really just reflect on it. You can actually do that same process. You could use your phone or if you journaled or did a digital planner, and you can also incorporate that into just seeing what type of person you were, where was your headspace as, how are you feeling emotionally, what you did well, and maybe what you struggled with. You take all that information, not to judge, but to actually say, okay, hey, wow, I'm really proud of myself and this is what I need to continue working on. So now that we've taken inventory of 2023, now we're gonna take that information and put it into journaling. I absolutely love journaling. It's a gateway for you to really meet yourself where you are and become an expert of you. So I'm a big fan of it. I have other videos on my channel all about journaling. Feel free to check them out. They'll be in the description box below. So I have my notebook right here. I also have my phone right here that I'm going to be reading off the questions. I'm also gonna leave them in the video so that you can write them down. You can pause this video, answer it, listen to my answer, or you could just watch it all the way through and then do the process for yourself at home. But you could definitely do it alongside of me. The first question is, what are three things you are proud of accomplishing this year? So the first one was a speaking engagement. I did a speaking engagement in January and it was my first one post pandemic and I absolutely loved it. It was my first time at a planner event. The community was so welcoming. I learned so much about planning. I did a speaking workshop on and I really just had a blast. Spoiler alert, I actually did like a soft launch of my wellness brand. I had t-shirts, notepads, journals, and I got 
excellent, excellent feedback. I just had an amazing time. My second accomplishment was a seven day cruise with my family. We are a family of five. I talked about that in a couple of my monthly resets. I was excited and nervous. I wasn't sure how I was gonna do on the ship. I was watching tons of YouTube videos. Shout out to the people who put valuable information. I love you guys. It was such a valuable experience. We went on excursions. My kids challenged themselves. Their inner Tomb Raider came out. We were just doing all type of things. And man, I mean, it was, it was such a high. And my third accomplishment was going to Europe. We went to Europe, Norway and Sweden for two weeks. We hiked, we saw the Northern Lights. It was such a beautiful experience. I got to see things that I only seen in pictures in the National Geography magazines that I used to see as kids. It was such a beautiful and healing and restorative moment just to be away from everything and be in nature. Those are the things that I was so happy to accomplish this past year, one personal and two with my family. It was beautiful. Reflection number two is how have you seen yourself grow in the past 12 months? I really took time to really reflect on this, you guys, because growth is something that I value and that's so important to me. Without growth, you're stagnant and you can easily become dissatisfied and unhappy with your life, which will then impact the people around you. For me, at the top of the year, calm was the word that I wanted to live by. That was my word of the year. I did not do any New Year's resolutions. I picked a word and I stuck by that word. <laughs> and I'm so happy to say that by me sticking by that word, my relationship with time really changed, you guys. I used to be a person who was late to everything, frazzled, always in a state of panic, thinking that I forgot something. And now I am proud to say that because I've incorporated habits and routines, such as setting alarms, planning, I mean, I've incorporated some really valuable things. And now I get up before my alarm is set. My kids trust me <laughs> to get them on time to places. And it's such a more enjoyable experience going to activities, for me going to appointments, for me going to events, because I'm not sporadic. And I get to save all of that energy for you things. It's not going to anxious moments. I'm so proud of myself. You make sure you take time to think about it. If you feel like you haven't grown at all, that's a lie. I rebuke that. <laughs> Whether you stop cussing people out, whether you started a new job, you made new friends, you had growth. Reflection question number three is what is something you wish you did differently this year? And this is what I wrote. I wish that I was able to embrace and enjoy my resting season earlier. In the beginning, I was filled with doubts and guilt knowing that I needed to rest. This thought process made me feel like I lacked purpose. And instead of recognizing that this waiting period was a beautiful moment for me to reset. So I wish that I had just allowed myself to rest and be in this waiting season and to embrace it and learn from it instead of bringing myself down and building my way back up. If you're in a waiting season or a resting season, embrace it, enjoy it, live in it. Because when you come out of that, you're going to feel rejuvenated, reset, and have the energy and the mindset to be able to tackle the things and make the shifts that you want so that you can be the best version of yourself, especially going into the new year. Reflection question number four, what is the biggest lesson you have learned. Y'all ready for this? To release toxic people sooner than later. Just because you're a considerate, open, non-judgmental person does not mean that that will be reciprocated. I'm thankful that I value healing and growth, but that doesn't mean that everybody in your circle will value the same thing, no matter how much time they've been with you. So release them and continue elevating. Release them. Let them go. I had a hard lesson that I had to learn. Just because somebody is along the journey with you for X amount of time, you're continuing on that journey. You're continuing to elevate. You're continuing to better yourself. That doesn't mean that they value the same thing. So at some point in time, you will outgrow them. And hanging on to them for the sake of time does you no justice. And honestly, it doesn't do them justice either because it doesn't create a healthy dynamic. And the next one, who had the biggest influence on you this year? Hands down, my daddy. From yard work to lights to doing anything in my house, my daddy be with it all the way. We may argue because he don't see my Pinterest vision, but that's okay though, because he be right there riding for me. And it has just been such a beautiful thing going to church with him, opening the doors, walking down the aisle and just seeing him at the same spot every Sunday. It's 
just so, I don't know, I could get like, oh gosh, I could get emotional about it because, man, he's just such a good man in my life. And I'm, I'm honestly so thankful for him in so many ways. I tell him that all the time that, man, the way he shows up for me is so healing and loving. I love that, man. Needed to drink on that, bring myself, collect myself a little bit. And the last reflection question is, what is something that you would say to your future self a year from now? I'm glad you acted. I allow procrastination, overthinking, and perfectionism to stop me from acting in the moment. So that hold me back. I'm the person holding me back. I can be honest and say that. So to my future self a year from now, I am happy that you acted. Now let's talk about some lessons from 2023. As I said before, the last time that I uploaded a monthly reset was back in June. In July, I went on the cruise. August, my kids started school. Then September and October, like that end period, I was preparing and then I was over in Europe for the first time. Then I came back in October, had to adjust. November was my birthday month, whoop, whoop. Then I was also Thanksgiving. And here we are into December. The biggest lesson that I learned from 2023 is that I struggle in transition. For myself, I have to work on being better at awareness, better at grace for myself and understanding how to delegate tasks and give myself time. When I don't accomplish things or when I get off track from the things that I planned, knowing that there's a transition, I'm still hard on myself. And that does me no good, my family no good, my family, my friends no good, nor my community any good. So the lesson that I'm taking away from 2023 is transitions are hard and that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> Embrace them, lean into them, and work on enjoying them more with realistic goals. Now that I've reflected on 2023, I really feel good about stepping into 2024. And the way that I'm going to step into it is with my new word of the year. So if you stay to the end of this video, then you know my word of the year is and it's going to be, drum roll please. Now, that's the word for my 2024. Now just symbolizes to me that it doesn't have to be earned, it doesn't have to be put off. So whether that's self-care, whether that's posting a video, sharing any thoughts or any inspiration that comes to mind, it doesn't have to be packaged beautifully. I wanna just do it now. All of my behaviors, my habits, my thought process is going to be all about now. <laughs> so I do plan to make a more in-depth video dedicated to planning 2024, which I'm excited about. But if you're wanting just a snapshot to get started in the planning process because you've done all of this reflecting and you don't want to just stop right here, you want to keep on going, then I'm going to just share some steps that you can take right now. My word, now. <laughs> Number one is to reflect and set. So you've already done a lot of the reflection. Now you take that reflection and set some intentions for 2024. What are your goals? What do you want to accomplish for 2024? Write them down. Statistics show that if you write them down, you're more likely to actually accomplish them. Number two is you can define your goals. So you can do this by looking at the different areas of your life. You have health friends, career, relationships, personal development. You just have a lot of areas of your life that you can look at and just try to set goals for them. I like to set no more than three, which I'll get into in the video, but you can set those goals for yourself based off of the reflections and the intentions for the year. Number three is to decide how you want to actually see your goals. If you're a planner, Using paper is a beautiful thing. If you go the more digital route, then using your iPad or your computer is a way for you also to document the goals and for you to be able to track them. I know people also love vision boards. I ditched them a couple of years ago, but that's just me. But I know that if you're a visual person, seeing that aesthetically and putting that together with your hands and having that to see every day is a beautiful way also to motivate you and help you also keep track of just going toward the goals that you had already reflected on, that you had already designed and then set. And then the last one is to connect with a buddy. Accountability is 
a great thing. I have a best friend that comes along with the journey with me up, down, she there with me. And I love that for me. And I would also love that for you. So definitely have support around you for you to be able to accomplish. If you want to check out where I started back in the top of 2023 in January, then you can check out that video here just to see the progression of where I started and where I came from. If you're ready to plan your 2024, then I also have a video for you right there, which you can also check out. But honestly, I'm just really wishing the best for you as we close out this year. Really just take it at your own pace. Don't feel rushed. Don't feel like you have to copy somebody else's because honestly, you won't win at it. You won't be successful because it's not personalized to you. Start with you, meet yourself where you're at, and you'll be most likely to get to where you actually want to go. If you found this video helpful, then definitely like this video. Don't forget to subscribe, share this with somebody that you think would find it beneficial. And I will see you guys in the next video. Happy healing.